right, guys, we're back. We're here to talk about Married at First Sight. Season 17, episode 20. So we are at decision day. And um, this is bittersweet. I don't understand why Emily and, I mean, not Emily, thank you. Um, why Becca and Austin <clears throat> decided to stay together. Um, I think the experts were wrong. I think they had a lot of differences versus what they had in common. And I think religion was one of the um, biggest uh, problems, you know, that they had. And I also think that Austin has a level of emotional intelligence, but it wasn't to the point where he could truthfully communicate with Becca. And that's the difference that I see between he and Michael. Um, Michael is of the emotional maturity that he can actually communicate himself to Chloe. So I could be proven wrong, you know, on that, but I thought they had it, you know, backwards. So um, I wanted to be able, you know, to kind of put that, you know, together. And I thought that, you know, looking back on it, his mother was right. So I'm not sure. I'll go back and actually look and see if I have that um, in the season. And if I don't, I'll post it, you know, as a bonus clip. So you guys can see it, you know, for yourself. Um, I also have a problem with Christians, you know, that come on here and really think, you know, that they know who the Lord is. If Christians that come on the show actually knew who the Lord is, then they would be acting completely different. He would have told her the truth. And he would have done it in love, in a way that she would have been able to receive it and it wouldn't have been this um, thing that they now have between them if you actually go back and look at the end, you know, of the episode. So, talking about <clears throat> uh, the end of the episode, you know, Becca is looking at and questioning the stuff, the intimacy, the religion, differences, you know, that they have. And Christian's and I didn't either, so I'm not being judgmental, you know, when I say this. I'm just saying this, realizing, you know, my own uh, failures, you know, as someone who called themselves, you know, a Christian. You guys are going to have to realize that people are looking at you. And when you, when you move against Christ, uh, against the beliefs that most of us have been taught, and then we see you not living up to them, then nobody's going to respect you. And I think that that is a whole thing that um, I've suffered from, you know, in my life. The problem is, is that a lot of Christians that have judged me are refusing to judge themselves. I promise you, 100% of the Christians who have judged me over my lifetime have failed to take the same lens and put it for themselves. They refuse to put themselves on the same microscope that they want to put you under. And that's why I'm able to have this conversation, you know, about Christians, is because I put myself, you know, under that microscope. So, um, I like Becca for what she said about Austin and how she's really trying to believe him and she understands the hurt that he's feeling at being and showing up as this person and then not being believed for the person that he's trying to present to her. So I don't know if that means anything to anybody out there, but I actually got it. And I, I also understand why she has questions, you know, about that. I see her ambivalence, and I think that, you know, her um, instincts are actually telling her 
that this is why she's in this level of ambivalence. So um, he said to the experts that at this point, he didn't feel like she actually um, felt him as, as authentic on or off camera. And according to her, that is his doing. You know, she's now at this point where she's questioning, you know, who are you? You know, which Austin, you know, am I getting? Am I getting on camera Austin or I'm getting off camera Austin? And for him not to be able to communicate himself in that way is really putting a detriment, you know, to the relationship. Another thing is uh, she's kind of accusing him of really asking her to hold back. And she doesn't think that's, you know, fair. And then she says she start talking about her real feelings and not really trying to protect the relationship anymore when she has that last um, experience, you know, with Cal and Pepper. And that's, she said that's when she started actually stepping up and trying to stand, you know, in her own truth. And so... Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting is um, she said that she was going to try to give them a chance without the cameras and without production. So that was something that, that kind of caught my ears. And she said that she felt like she lost herself, you know, in this, and she really kind of wants to recenter and kind of get back to that after, you know, this whole experience. And um, she wanted her agreement to continuing in the marriage was to see if something was going to change after the cameras went off and then giving her the space to come back to herself and um, kind of recenter so that she could make sure that she's congruent and what her eyes, her mind, and her spirit, you know, are telling her. And she doesn't want to be let off course by the experiment and stuff that Austin is saying. She wants to be clear and concise and grounded in, you know, her decisions and wherever she's, you know, taking her next step. So I thought that was, um, really valid i thought that was a valid point and i'm gonna give that you know to her she's wanting austin you know to just walk in truth you know if he can't physically you know be with her then if he's emotionally with her then tell her the truth you know about where he is so then we're with emily and brennan I thought that the experts were telling the truth about, you know, what they saw in the relationship. I agree with uh, Emily that Brennan put a block up after the honeymoon. And one of the things that I remember him talking about, and she, both of them had a conversation, is that she said that she was bad with money. But the thing is, she also what I remember was saying that she was open to learning something new. So instead of Brennan really listening and incorporating what she actually said, I saw that as one of the times where he heard what he wanted to hear. And then his mind started to formulate these opinions. And instead of him talking to her about his concerns or even asking more questions, he just kind of started to settle. And I think that because we think we know so much in society, if you're successful in your business, you know, whether it be a trade, whether it be, you know, on your, you know, job as just a lay person, you know, manager, whatever, you're competent. You're competent to know how to make money. You're competent to learn how to lead people. You're competent to be able to keep operations running. So that's a level of competence. That doesn't mean that the competence 
that you've managed to find is equal to being more intelligent, you know, than somebody else. I think a lot of people, you know, get confused about that. And I see that with Brandon. I mean, Emily has managed to figure out how to keep herself at a certain income, at a certain lifestyle, by herself, without a husband's or a boyfriend's influence. And she needs to be, you know, congratulated, you know, for that. So instead of him taking that knowledge that she actually has managed to get for herself and uh, utilize that and say, hey, we can do this or we can do that. Because she actually, again, if I said it before, she sounded like, you know, she was open, you know, to that kind of experience. So for him to have cut himself off from that opportunity, you know, to have a partner to grow with, like they were talking about, you know, on the honeymoon, then yeah, that's just another level of ignorance. And men do this, you know, all the time. You know, they want to judge women. They say they want this. You know, you can't have a, a Madonna you know, the Virgin Mary and a whore at the same time. There is a, a um, what is it? Um, I know it's a disconnect. What, there's another phraseology for what I'm trying to say. Is it cognitive dissonance? And that's what men, I think, suffer from. You guys, you want it all. And you're not willing to give it all, number one. And I'm going to divert, I'm going to do a sidebar, you know, here and let you know that just because you guys are physically more uh, strong than us, does that mean that you're more intelligent? If men were more intelligent than women, then Adam would never have taken anything Eve gave him from that tree that they were told not to mess with. He would have knocked it out of her hand and he would have pulled her in front of the Lord and said that we have a problem. This woman has went and eaten off this tree and now we have a problem. What are we going to do? And that's the situation that they were in. And he wasn't able to figure out the right answer to that dilemma. And men, for some reason, especially black men, they want their women to be at their feet. And I promise you, I'm never going to be at the feet of one man on this planet. You are not more intelligent than I am. Just because you have more muscular advantage over me. So, I hope that that was something that I communicated in that rant that was clear. So, who are we looking at? Okay, money, sex, lifestyle with um, Emily and Brennan. And then, when they were having their um, last dinner together... He was talking about her negativity. And this woman showed no negativity. Everybody communicated how positive she was when she went through one of the most traumatic experiences, you know, that she had. And for people who want to look at her after show experience, this is her looking back at what she understood was going on. So now, when she's talking in the after party, she's more clear about, yes, I understand what I was feeling then, and now I see the truth about the stuff that was going on that I didn't know that was going on, especially when her fans were talking to Brennan at their housewarming party. So it's really frustrating, you know, for me when I hear people who continuously review the show. And that's another reason why I really kind of take my time to think about what I want to say to you guys. Because it's not just about, 
oh, the episode came on, and now I have to tell you, you know, what I saw. I actually want to sit down and think about, you know, what actually happened, you know, in front of me. And a lot of people are saying that they think Emily is fake, and they're, you know, looking over, you know, things. Like Brennan, oh, I tried to protect you. No, he didn't try to protect her. He tried to protect himself. And he's using, oh, I tried to protect you as a shield to put himself in a light that he actually doesn't deserve to be in. He wasn't trying to protect her. He was trying to protect himself. And in doing so, he actually ended up exposing himself. So that's just one of the mysteries of what happens in life. And um, I actually hope that, you know, I actually hope, still hope he ends up with a prostitute because of his severe judgment, you know, against Emily. And I hope she's bad, you know, with money. So um, I'm glad that Emily stood up for herself. I, I thought that was really good. I appreciated her for communicating that. And at some point in the season, you can start to see, you know, how she's starting to, you know, uh, step up. Becca was saying that she only started to step up at this last end when she was talking to Cal and Pepper. But Emily started, you know, talking earlier with uh, Dr. Pia. And I'm really happy that she did that level of documentation, you know, for herself. And um, I'm glad that the experts, you know, were starting to call him out. Like Cal, you know, was starting to call Brandon out. And Brandon, oh, I was just trying to protect you. when he could have just really just asked her questions. You know, if it's something that you need to know, it's something you need to be, you know, um, you need to have illumination on, ask questions. Because people can't really accuse you of anything serious if you're asking for clarification. And that's the thing. And then ask the question in a way so that you really are trying to get to the answer. Not so that you're trying to judge them, you know, for something. Because when people ask questions, it's your tone. You have to make sure that you're letting the person know that I, I'm not coming at you. I'm just really t confused. And I just kind of want to know, you know, how we can, what can we do, you know, to get us to a level, you know, of understanding. Brennan had uh, selective hearing, and um, I said, I've said this, I've said this, um, well, actually, if you actually go back to the honeymoon, when she asked him if he knew how to have fun, and then he got mad about that. A lot of people think that that's the time when that was the disconnect, you know, between he and her because he wasn't listening, you know, to her. He was just reacting to something that he thought that she said. I saw that um, at the steakhouse at the last episode. And it was also another time, you know, that I heard him, you know, um, say that, you know, to her. And he just, he doesn't listen to the entirety of the conversation and then weigh it appropriately his ears and his mind are focused in on certain things that come out of her mouth. And then he just kind of hones in, you know, on that. Because if you actually go back and, and listen to him through the season, there are plenty of times, you know, that she's been positive, that she's been upbeat. He told Pastor Cal that the person that he saw at the interview was the same person he's been with, you know, all that time. You know, the whole soccer, you know, date, the whole exercise date. You know, he actually was more negative toward the exercise than she was. And that's because he couldn't hang. You know, that whole Pilates, you know, episode, you know, took him, you know, through something else. And um, I think that it's something that he is, he's holding. He's, he's trying to hold her accountable for things 
that I think he wants to obfuscate and put on her instead of, you know, taking accountability, you know, for himself. So I'm really interested to see um, what the reunion, you know, brings. I think that at the um, decision day, he just at some point kind of wanted it over because he knew that at some point they weren't going to agree. And then I love Emily for telling him that she felt disrespected. And I really have a problem with him saying that he kind of held back because he felt like Dr. Pepper asked him, so do you think that your opinions about her would affect her in such in a like really negative way? And he was like, yeah, because he didn't want to be the reason why she would never date again. But my thing is, Brennan, this is the issue. You can't levy that, 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 that weight of judgment on her if you're not willing to put X amount of weight on judgment, you know, for yourself. So he's coming at her as if he doesn't have anything going on, you know, with himself. So I was really, that, that part of the scene, you know, really, it just did something, you know, to me. Because at this point, if I was Emily, I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't care what Brennan thought about me. Because you didn't respect me enough, and you didn't care about me enough, to actually tell me the truth. So if there's something about me that needs to be improved, that you would come and tell that, you know, to me as my husband, you know, as a husband, that's what you're supposed to do. It's like iron sharpens iron, you know, it's that kind of thing. And he just wanted to cop out. He just wanted to be like, oh, well, she's this. I remember when they, um, like I said, was on the honeymoon. And they were talking about money. And she was saying that, you know, she didn't, she wasn't good with her money, but she was open. But then when they were moving into her apartment, and somehow her bag opened up, and he looked inside the bag, and he said that this is where your money goes. And when he closed that bag, you could see his whole thing even double down before um, they actually, you know, moved in. He already had an attitude, you know, before that. And it was just uh, an affirmation to him on top of what his mind had already told him. And he was done. And I agree with Emily. I don't think that he tried. I don't think that he gave her a fair opportunity, you know, in the uh, experiment. And um, I think, you know, that he's going to miss out. And like I, I say, I hope he ends up with a prostitute or I hope he ends up with a woman. <clears throat> that this level of Brandon would have judged as um, not worthy. I hope he ends up with a woman that he would have considered not worthy the same way that he considers Emily not worthy. That's my point. And so I have nothing against prostitutes, okay? Okay. Um, yeah, I said that. And to Emily, child, nobody's going to pay attention, you know, to my reviews. I like Emily. You know, I have my own issue <clears throat> with white people. But when I actually see a good one, I, you know, I'm cool. And um, Emily is actually one white person I hang out with. She's that cool, you know, to me. And yeah, child, I am not a lover of white people, but I like Emily. I like Emily. I love Nicole. Child, y'all know how I feel about Nicole. And Lindsay. Lindsay from that Elijah Wan season. Child, if I ever run Lindsay, I ain't lying. I buy that woman a drink. And I would love to be able to have a conversation with her. So who are we? Okay. So when um, Cal was talking to them after he said that he wasn't going to help them fight for their marriage, 
he congratulated, you know, Brennan on his self-awareness. I don't think that Brendan had self-awareness, and I don't think that he had um, accountability. And I love that uh, Emily said that she was able to prove some of the craziness that they were talking about because it was on FaceTime and she has a recording. So a lot of people are really on her saying that she's lying, she doesn't have any proof, and she says that she actually has a FaceTime conversation that has been saved and um, was able to kind of show that conversation that she was talking about, you know, between her and Brennan. So go, girl. It reminds me of Monica Lewinsky in that blue dress. You do it, girl. So, um, <clears throat> we're looking at Cameron and Claire. I'm not even going to talk about them because Clam uh, Cameron. Cameron already, um, confess later on in the um, episode that he has been lying for Emily. So at this point, I don't know who's lying and I don't know who's telling the truth. What I understand that I see from Claire, I'm more um, inclined to believe Cameron than I am her. So I'm glad and they already said that they was going to get a divorce. And they was rolling around and, and hog slop, you know, doing it. So I don't understand why we all had to suffer, you know, listening to them. With uh, Lauren and Orion, uh, when we see them, when all the couples, you know, come out, a lot of people had a problem with her extended friendship, you know, to him. It's called forgiveness, people. It's called forgiveness. Child. If you understand the level of forgiveness that the Lord requires from his people, what Lauren did is a walk in the park. You guys don't get it. This woman is on a beautiful spiritual journey. I she is um I hope that she is healed from it as she continues, you know, on her way. I personally don't think that she and Orion are still together, even though I hope that they are, because of what she's saying, you know, on the after show. So, for everybody that's getting excited, you know, about this stuff that they think that they're saying about Lauren and Orion, I just don't think that he has the juice, you know, to keep it together. So, um, <clears throat> looking at Becca and Austin, you know, um, I think Austin really missed the opportunity because they showed us film, and I have it down there, where after, after they made their decision, Becca is trying to reiterate to Austin, you know, that she wants them, you know, to be on one level, eye to eye, a team, moving forward, and doing this thing, you know, step by step, you know, together. And then for her to get communication, you know, from Claire that Austin is out with Brennan and a producer that's been with them is unsettling to her because uh, Austin has been talking about, you know, he doesn't want the optics. He is concerned about being on camera and he doesn't think she supports him and then you know he's out you know after decision day where he actually should have been with his wife he actually should have been with becca there's no reason or if he wanted to go out and he wanted to hang out he should have called her and said hey man we all down here together come on let's do this and celebrate you know decision day and he didn't do that and then I think the thing for her was when she actually confronted him and she asked him, was a producer there? And he said, no. That was like, yeah, I mean, you know, come on, Austin. You're going to have to take responsibility, you know. And then he wanted to turn around on her. Oh, are you mad at me about something? You were there. You know where her question is asking you. And then now, instead of you answering the question, you want to try to answer her question with a question. That's inappropriate. 
And then Brennan is just going to sit there and not say anything. So then when um, Becca is talking about, you know, um, to the experts that she felt like she was being silenced, that she was being misunderstood, you know, for some folding in the conversation, Claire is talking about, you know, all the women, you know, at some point trying to be silenced because she was telling about what Cameron, she was telling what Cameron told, she was told about what Cameron said about, um, he and Brennan going out for a double date. And she went back and repeated that to Emily. And then Cameron was like, yeah, you need to mind your business and stay out, you know, of their relationship. And she was saying that at that point, she felt that he was trying to silence her. And then Cameron got offended because he felt that she was trying to silence him. So he said at no time did he feel like he was trying to silence her. And like I said, you know, he took that as an offense. I encourage you guys to go down there and look at it and see it for yourself. He got up, he left, he said, yeah, she's texting me, trying to tell me not to tell y'all that she's never been attracted to me, ever. From the first moment of meeting me, she was never attracted to me. And I appreciate him letting us know that, but my thing is, Cameron's kind of loose with his mouth. And I know, for me, I've been around men who have been very loose with their mouths. And if they had done something with it, if they had put a filter on their mouths, on their mouth, that um, I probably actually might have, you know, hung out with you a little bit longer. Just kind of see, you know, what you was about. But because you just vomit words and you don't think about, you know, what you say, that actually, you know, can affect, you know, a person. Even if they're not, like, really feeling you, you know, at that moment. You can actually just really pour buckets of water on something that actually wasn't wet at all and just needs a spark. And because you're too stupid to understand how to use your mouth to get that spark, then now, you know... You in a deluge, and now you finna get divorced. So, I kind of see it from both sides. Again, I like to see, you know, what the um, reunion, you know, has to say about it. I don't have much um, faith in Kevin Frazier to be able to give us, you know, any real clarity. But I'm just telling y'all, you know, my um, where I am, you know, in it. So where else, you know, am I with Cameron and Claire? Oh, okay. So I said that I think that Claire has a hidden self. So she says that she's a therapist, but I believe that as a therapist, if you're gonna help people, then you have to share, you know, with people. And Claire wants to hide behind that bubble she wants to hide behind that bubble of I'm a doctor, I'm educated, I've got all this theory, and here I am trying to put all this theory, you know, on you. And um, I do have a feeling of a level of a person that's not being genuine. And I felt that, you know, from her ever since she started talking about, you know, her whole Catholic, you know, nuttiness. And um, it was really interesting to hear Cameron talking about how he was happy that they were mature and that they actually left the, the session, you know, on a level of compatibility and that the blame game, you know, doesn't help anyone. But then when we fast forward to them all being together, you know, we see the breakdown of, you know, all that. And so I do, I see both. I, I see what he's talking about, you know, with her, 
But then I also see problems, you know, that I've observed, you know, in him at the same time. And then he turns around and calls her, you know, a hypocrite. And um, they, when they got together, it was almost, Michael and Chloe were like um, spectators. And the rest of them were like a men's versus women's kind of conversation. I'm glad that Orion really didn't get in that. He asked, um, I think, Becca a question about like um, what kind of relationship, you know, was she looking for? But I didn't hear any animosity, you know. I just heard kind of curiosity, you know, coming out of him. So I actually appreciate, you know, him for that. And I thought that um, I have down here protect the marriage. So when I hear Brennan talking about, I was trying to protect you, I was trying to protect you, I was trying to protect you. I think that he was trying to protect the marriage so that they didn't end up, you know, one of the, like season 12. And that's exactly what they have put themselves in. They have put themselves in a special season because they didn't want to just come and just be real and, um, you know, be together and love, you know, one another. So, look, um, I have here that Lauren and Orion, she's trying to forgive him again. And I appreciate, you know, that from her. Forgiveness is very hard. It's not easy, you know, to... It sounds easy, but it's not. So for people who are discounting the effort that she's making to this human being that she actually stood in front of and made vows to, she made a promise, you know, to this person. And I feel her as taking that promise seriously, as we all should. You should not be in front of another person making promises to them. And then at the first, you know, sign of failure, you just turn your back, you know, on them. That's another reason why society is as jacked up, you know, as it is today. And I just love the womanhood, you know, that I see coming off of Lauren. And again, you know, I really appreciate her. Um, so we'll see. We'll see, you know, what happens. I put up the sneak peek for what's supposed to be, you know, tonight's episode. And they really aren't giving, I haven't seen anything that they're giving us um, in the synopsis about, you know, what's coming. So I'll continue to post um, information as I get it. And I appreciate everybody, you know, all the subscribers. I really hope you guys are um, enjoying the content. I hope you are enjoying um, my reviews. Um, and welcome to all the new subscribers. So this is going to end my um, review of Married at First Sight, uh, episode 20, season 17. And anybody that's going to hang in there with me for a few more minutes, you know, I appreciate you. I just really, at this election season, you know, want to encourage you guys to, you know, just really understand, you know, where we're living. We're giving billions of dollars. Billions and trillions. I mean, you're talking about 20 years in uh, Afghanistan. That's trillions of dollars that we've used to upend people's lives. We've killed people's families. We've committed genocide, not just in Gaza, also in Yemen, and also in uh, Africa. So um, we're causing havoc all over the world. And uh, People who say that they're doing this in the name of Jesus, you guys are really anti-Christ. And you're hurting people. You're really hurting people 
because you're biblically ignorant. And again, I was in the military. I served in the military for eight years. So I'm not judging you when I'm telling you this information. I'm just telling you the information. So if you get mad at me because I'm trying to give you what I understand to be true, okay. Okay. Because, you know, especially with white supremacy, that's all they have is anger. And they use it as fuel to continue to be blind to the truth. So, I think that I'm going to start to pick Sundays to do my review. So, um, I think when we have the episode tonight, then I'll do the review on Sunday. And then... If I have, you know, other stuff that I want to, you know, talk about after the review, then I'll do it, you know, then. Thank you for your time and attention, and I'll talk to you guys, you know, on the next video.